おはようございますリンゴです、えー、今日はサグラダファミリアの前に来ていますサグラダファミリアのビッグニュースはマリアの塔のてっぺんにモーニングスターが乗りました見えますかあのマリアの塔のてっぺんにモーニングスターっていうガラスとステンレスでできた星が乗ってるんですね夜はあれが点灯してすごい綺麗な風景になるみたいですもうねこちらから見ててもね神々しさが増した感じがしますえー、とこれから今日はパパの仕事のお手伝いでバイクツアーあの自転車に乗ってバルセロナの中を走り回るっていうビデオを作る予定です私が撮影をしながらパパにバイクツアーをしてもらうっていうスタート地点はここサグラダ・ファミリアなので今日はパパのガイドビデオ作り密着したいと思いますでは行ってみましょうはい、今日はね、サグラファミリアの後ろの空がすっごい綺麗に見えてます。So we cross、uh, a plaza, and this is the best perspective of the Nativity facade, where there is a pond. The Antoni Gaudi Cornet was the architect. He spent 43 years of his life, and he knew that this would be under construction for generations. Even he said, "The highs I'm drawing,、uh, the new generation will have the technology to reach them." In the future, there will be 18 different towers, including the 12 apostles, the four evangelists, Mary and Jesus, that、uh, will have a height between. Between 98 and 172.5 meters. こんな感じでパパが地上ガイドしてくれてます。今日はね、あのこの池がちゃんとお水が入ってて、時々ね、お水が入ってきて、えみたいな絵になる時があって、なんか干からびた感じに。今日は綺麗に写真が撮れる日でした。はい、じゃ次にステップに移りましょう。So we have walked around the church. Now we are in Sardinia Street in front of the Passion, Death, and Resurrection facade. The sculptures are very different to the other sides because they were made, designed by who was considered the most important Catalan sculptor of the 20th century, Josep Maria Subirax, who passed away in 2014. Hola, hola, proban un dos y vayan a la bicicleta a ver una catal. Vale. Ahora ya se han capallado, ¿eh? So we have just taken a bicycle to ride from la Sagrada Familia to Plaza de Catalunya, passing by Passeig de Gracia and the Gaudí Houses. Barcelona is a city that is ideal for the bike rides. There are tens of、uh, kilometers of bike lanes. This is the first stop we do. We just stop at the junction of Provença and Passeig de Sant Joan. In that direction, we have the sea, and on the other side, we have the mountains. Barcelona has a population of 1.6 million people, with about 100 square kilometers. So it's one of the highest densities of population in Europe. And the boundaries are very clear. On one side we have the sea, the mountains, but also north and south is that we have two rivers, Besos and Llobregat rivers. As you can notice, the corners, the corners are cut off. These are called in architecture chamfered corner. So in this neighborhood that we called La Champla or the enlargement in English. 
Uh, everything has the same layout. It's uh, like a, ch a chessboard. The streets, they go parallel and perpendicular to the sea. And the blocks have 133 by 133 meters. Look at the corner there. The corners, they are cut off. That's um, a very interesting design when you think that all oh, this was designed back in 1859 by a man whose name was Serdar and he was a visionary because he designed the city of the future with all these wide streets and avenues in a moment in 1859 when the automobiles had not been designed. This is the junction of Diagonal and Passeig de Gracia, where this obelisk that was before a monument to the monarchy of Spain. La Diagonal, in fact, is a social and geographical border. This border makes that the upper part of Barcelona is, is known as the Upper Barcelona, so in generally speaking, it's more expensive, and this is the lower part of the city. So geographical and also socially a border. Passeig de Gracia, where we are, is uh, known as the a kind of Champs-Élysées, Fifth Avenue is where you have all the high-end boutiques, uh, but also apartments, uh, hotels and restaurants. This was uh, the favorite street of the bourgeoisie, the wealthy families, 100 years ago. They wanted to live here. This all this area with this greed, this was designed back in 1859, and the development lasted several decades. We start seeing on the left hand side one of the highlights of Barcelona. We're going to stop over there. So, here on the across the street, we can see La Casa Milà, also known as uh, La Pedrera. Pedrera in English means the quarry, because the people said, What's this weird thing? Look like a quarry, or that reminds me a little bit uh, kind of honeycomb. Think that the architect, Antoni Gaudí, he never said. Uh, what he did to represent with this wavy facade uh, that is so organic. This is one of the characteristics of Antoni Gaudí, this organicism. Um, this was at the time a residential uh, building. The owners, the Mila family, were living on the first floor and they rented the rest. Today, nowadays, it's said we have still two ladies, tenants, that are living there. And also there are three stories that work like a Gaudí museum. And I don't know if you reach to see the top, the chimneys that look like uh, the stormtroopers of Star Wars, and at the top, this is, uh, these are the water towers or the water tanks. Along this avenue, you have this wonderful lamppost street lights with benches at the, uh, at the base by Pedro Falques. That's the time of the Art Nouveau, the time of Antoni Gaudi. So here we are in the junction of Aragó Street and Passeig de Gracia. And on the other side, what you can see is La Casa Ballo, the Ballo House by Gaudí. Again, the same architect of La Sagrada Familia. There was an existing building and Gaudí completely renovated it. This is uh, the corner of the so-called La Manzana de la Discordia, the Apple of Discord, because we are going to cross the street and you will see how there are three buildings almost next to the other by the trio of major architects at the time. In order, you will see the architect Gaudí, the architect Puig, and the architect Domènech i Montaner. We are going to cross to see it from closer. So, next to La Casa Ballo, we have this other house right behind me that is called the Amalia House, uh, the person who commissioned this um, apartment building, a very prosperous person of the time uh, who made a fortune as a chocolate maker, an industrialist of chocolate. I would say that this is the best building in Barcelona where you can see the original furniture of the time. That's really nice, they do guided tours inside. And from here we're going to see the last building in the same block. And finally, the third building in the same block is La Casa Lloy Morera, the Lloy Morera house by the architect Domenico Montané, who is considered the most important representative of the Art Nouveau style. And he was even a professor of Antoni Gaudí. At the time, the owners were living in this bow window on the, on the first floor and rented the rest. 
At the time it was all residential, but today instead we have uh, offices. Barcelona is a city where you, could, you can use easily the public transportation, the taxis, you can see characteristic like bees, huh? this yellow and black uh, taxis. You have also many uh, buses and also what is very convenient I think is the underground. It's cheap and safe and clean way of transportation that you can see on the left hand side that covers the entire city. Here we have crossed, and this is La Gran Via, Gran Via Avenue. Gran Via is the longest avenue in Barcelona. It's about nine uh, kilometers long and connects with the airport. So we start seeing in front of us where we are going to finish the first part of uh, this tour. We are reaching La Plaza de Catalunya that is considered the city center of Barcelona. And also it's uh, uh, the center for transportation underground. We have the metro, the train, the buses on the ground. And Plaza Catalunya is considered also the geographical boundary between the uh, new city that we have been discovering with this grid of streets and the old city just opposite. So here we have arrived to uh, La Plaza de Catalunya, Catalonia Square. And around this plaza what we have are hotels, uh, department stores, shopping centers, apartments and offices. So I think this is the perfect spot to finish the part, the first part of the tour that is the, uh, the bike tour. Remember we came from Sagrada Familia, we finished here and I encourage you to follow my next video to virtually visit the city of Barcelona on a bicycle from Plaza de Catalunya towards the sea and the beaches. So see you in the next video, hope you have enjoyed and see you soon. Adios, adeus. Bye bye. Adeus.